Who will influence the nation with their creative bakes? Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. 12 of the country's most talented bakers are competing for the title of Tastemaster. And along with it, more than 90,000 rands worth of prizes. Tonight, the second six of the 12 contestants show off their baking skills, hoping to impress judges Solanene and Fritz Kuhn to earn their place in the top 10. I grew up here in the area, it's called Guamgae, it's in Durban, KwaZulu Natal, and most of my childhood I spent it with my grannies. Looking back, I wouldn't have it any other way because I'm always surrounded by freshness, chickens, fruit, vegetables. I'm a granny's girl and I love my gardening. Welcome to you, our second batch of finalists. Give yourselves a huge round of applause. When I see Zola, she's got such a presence about her. I have a lot of respect for her because she's very funny, but at the same time, she takes her job seriously. So I really like her. Last week, we met the first six contestants. This week, it's your chance. Today, you'll be battling it out for a spot in the top 10. At the end of this challenge, the top three contestants will be moving on, but the bottom three will be competing in our very first elimination challenge. Today is all about mastering spice. You have three hours to create a beautiful cake that has the amazing aromas of spice. Spice is my jam, man. Like, I love cooking with spice, baking with spice. It's part of my family, it's part of my heritage. I'm a very creative person, so my baking style is a bit abstract. I like to play with architectural lines. And I think what really gives me an edge in the kitchen is because I'm a self-taught baker, I've had a lot of flops in the past and I've learned a lot. And I think that tenacity is definitely a skill to have in the kitchen. Spices are not only meant for curries and for savory dishes. When used correctly, it can bring a whole new level of flavor to desserts. And that is what we're looking for. My earliest memory of baking is watching my aunt making mince pies, rolling the pastry, filling the pies with the mincemeat, the smells of the cloves and the cinnamon. It brings back such beautiful memories, especially around Christmas time, and that is what has inspired me and my passion in baking. I love flavors that are indulgent, and I love working with different textures and incorporating different spices from all over the world, and that's what I'm gonna definitely bring to this competition. The contestant that bakes the best spice cake can earn this. Throughout the competition, you will have the opportunity to win pins just like this. These pins symbolize a challenge that you have mastered. This particular pin will give you a very important advantage in our first top 10 challenge. Trust me, you want to earn this. I've got to get my hands on that pin. Contestants, this is the moment that you've been waiting for the opportunity to showcase your baking skills. To help us get you started on today's challenge, we've invited a very, very special guest to join us on the judging panel today. This person knows a thing or two about baking with spices, and she'll be giving you a private masterclass to get you inspired. This evening's guest judge is all about elevating home baking to the next level by sharing her creations with her online followers. She is no other than the stylish baker, Faiza Omar. My social media influence in the culinary world started off with me posting pastries that I tried out overseas. I'd come home and recreate them, trying out the techniques that I learned from the masterclasses I attended. And there was a definite need and growing demand in South Africa for sophisticated pastries. And people were really interested in what I was posting. My social media really took off when I started posting my travels. People were interested in the different flavors I encountered, like in Japan, it was matcha and yuzu, and then when I traveled to Dubai, it's cardamom and rose. And then coming home, incorporating those flavors in my own recipes, recreating and sharing them with my followers, I found that that was really very popular among my followers. It helped me grow on social media. Eventually, I got to have my own recipe book now. 
Traveling the world inspires Pfizer's creations, and a favorite destination is the city of love, Paris, where her food journey began. For me, Paris is charming. I love the old world architecture, the quaint little streets, and of course the patisserie. I remember my first trip to Paris. We just obviously tried out all the pastries and that's when I was hooked. I just fell in love with Paris, the patisseries, and of course my favorite pastry chef, Pierre Hermé. Every time I come to Paris, I have to stop by his store just to see what's new and just drawing inspiration from that, getting back home. I just can't wait to get back into my kitchen and just experiment and create my own recipes using his flavor combinations. For the Taste Masters Masterclass, we are going to be making my Persian love cake, which is in my recipe book. Uh, flavors of saffron, cardamom and rose. It's a very light sponge cake, an absolute favorite in my household. And legend has it that you can woo someone with this cake. So just keep that in mind. Coming up, Faisal woos the contestants with her spicy creation. Stand a chance of winning a weekly hamper from Le Creuset and be included into the draw for the grand prize of a Thermomix TM6 valued at 26,000 Rand. By creating your own bake with Royal Baking Powder and sharing your entry on the Tastemaster SA social media platforms. Entries close midnight on 5 December 2021. For further entry details and T's and C's, visit thetastemaster.co.za. Who will influence the nation with their creative bakes? Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Today for our masterclass, I'm going to bake my Persian love cake. The recipe is in my recipe book. I love the flavors of rose, cardamom and saffron. And these have ambrosial powers. So if you want to get someone to fall in love with you, bake this cake. For the sponge cake, we'll separate our eggs, egg yolks and egg whites. She is drop dead gorgeous and I'm such a fan of her style. She's so cool. She inspires my style. But also I'm such a big fan of her book, The My Sweet Life. To my egg yolks, I'll add my sugar and the zest of one lemon. When you zest your lemons, make sure that you work very gently with your zester. You don't want to get the white rind ever. It just gives you a very bitter taste. And my oil goes into my egg yolks. So this is a chiffon style sponge cake. That's why we separate our egg yolks from our egg whites. We beat each part separately and then fold them together very gently and this gives you a very light, delicate sponge. Next, the cardamom seeds. Cardamom is a lovely warming spice and in this recipe works so well with the rose and saffron. I'm gonna sift in my cake flour, salt, and one teaspoon of royal baking powder. Sift your dry ingredients into your egg yolk mixture. Using a whisk, so this is your hand whisk, just gently fold in. We want to keep the volume in the egg yolk. So this is very important. Don't work with a heavy hand. You will deflate your batter. Once your cake flour is mixed into your egg yolks, we'll proceed to fold in our egg whites. Take half of your egg whites and fold it into your egg yolk mixture. I always use a hand whisk and again, just work very gently. My cake batter is ready. I'll divide my cake batter between three 15 centimeter cake tins, which I've lined and greased. Our sponges will bake for 20 minutes on 180 thermal fan. Um, normally you spice for puddings and hot meals, you know? <laughs> so to incorporate it into a cake, I never thought that would be the first challenge. We're ready to make our rose and saffron cream. We'll start off by whipping our mascarpone, vanilla, rose water, rose syrup, two pinches of saffron. Saffron is an exotic spice which is more expensive than gold per gram. With the mascarpone cream, you need to work slowly to make sure that your cream doesn't curdle. If you find your mascarpone cream has curdled, just add a little bit more whipping cream and continue to whip on a low speed and your cream will be saved. 
If you find that it's a very hot day, you can chill your cream before decorating. Divide the cream evenly between your sponges and just layer them. For the final deco touches, we'll have some chopped pistachios, dried rosebuds and fresh flowers. I think I might go in this direction for the Persian love cake. It's interesting flavors. It's interesting components all going together. It's looking beautiful. I'll finish off with some dried edible rosebuds. Here you go, my Persian love cake. I can't wait to taste and see what you create. Good luck. Are you guys feeling inspired? Yes. Welcome our guest judge, Faiza Omar. She is a cake goddess. She is like floating on the floor with this cake and I'm just like overwhelmed. That's a good looking cake. She looks amazing too. You all look so excited and I'm so excited to be here. As you know, I'm a huge fan of spices and I can't wait to taste your delicious treats. Now, before we get to the baking, you will get 30 minutes for planning and researching your winning cake recipe. But first, let's cut into this beautiful cake. Yes. <laughs> ah, that cake is so beautiful. Can't wait to taste it. And uh, hope I can replicate something similar to that or more. It tastes as good as it looks. I'm getting aromas of the saffron. It's warm flavors of cardamom. Wow. OK, I'm inspired. This is the standard to be today. I've only got 30 minutes, I need to get going. I start thinking of spice. I start thinking in my life, where do I love spice? Where do I love to incorporate it? And then I thought about a chai latte. I start scribbling, I start thinking, I start doing my calculations. I'm thinking of chai flavors today with some cinnamon. When the judges taste my cake, I want them to experience the same when they would taste the chai latte. Maybe I might go for a two layer. Some jelly might go into there. Lemon and ginger also might work, and some berries. My mind goes to Kusista. They things that I bake often with my family, especially my mom. It's got a lot of spice in. Now the challenge is trying to replicate that into a cake. It's time to get going, it's time to bake. Contestants, you are competing for a spot in the top 10. You have three hours to create a beautiful cake using a spice of your choice. Three hours is actually good for me. It's a lot of time because I overthink. Three hours is a very long time because I just, have, I just have to bake the cake, make the frosting, and then I'm icing the cake and I'm done. So two hours is enough. You have all the equipment that you need to complete this challenge at your station. You have Samsung appliances, you have uh, La Crusade cookware, and a brand new Thermomix TM6 at your disposal. The pantry is available to you throughout the challenge and has every single ingredient you could possibly need. Are you ready to bake more memories? Yes! Your time starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Get, Get baking. baking! I start with my nachis. I'm looking over at the spices, seeing which ones I need. At the same time, just at the back of my mind, thinking about starting my cake. My cake needs cinnamon and cardamom, so I'm definitely grabbing those. I have to warm my eggs, <laughs> otherwise I'm not confident with them. I'm adding warm water into my eggs, because when I increase the temperature, the egg whites and the egg yolk, they thicken. So when I add my sugar and I whip it up, it whips up better and much more quicker. I'm adding three teaspoons of oil baking powder. This is not normally the case, it's usually two, but I know and I've learned over time that when you're at sea level, your cake doesn't rise as much. You need a little bit more of that baking powder because of the air pressure. Well, at least that's my experience with it. Megan, hello. Hello, Hi. hello, hello. hello. Oh, this looks very spicy. I yes. need some cinnamon <laughs> and cloves mm -hmm. and cardamom. Mm. Are you making a chai tea, Megan? <laughs> I am. I'm inspired by my favorite drink, which is a chai latte. So I thought I would bring it into a cake form. It's going to be drink. spicy. We like that. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Mobile, hello. Hi. I'm yeah. curious. Lots of interesting things here. Yeah. I see avos yeah. and I see gelatine powder. Yeah. What are you making? A spicy pistachio and zucchini wow. um, cake. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to incorporate some avocado mousse into the topping wow. and some lemon curd. My baking is inspired by homey flavors, so I enjoy incorporating fresh and seasonal produce into my baking. My grandma, I'm very connected to her because she played a huge role in me growing up. 
And like most grandparents, she's very loving and protective over her grandkids. And she's always motivating me to dream big enough for the both of us. Winning this competition would mean a great deal for me because it would mark the beginning of my foodie career. And working with a trusted brand like Royal Baking Powder, which has been used for ages and generations and generations, would be an honor. Coming up, with the clock ticking, the pressure starts to get the better of some contestants. My name is Kenzani Peters and I am the founder and owner of Ntobelo Cakes. Uh, I have a background in IT. I, I have an information technology diploma. I worked as a computer programmer for about six years and I didn't quite enjoy that. I'm not a very technical person and I was really unhappy with my job. I really had to do a lot of soul searching and I had to you know, go back and, and ask myself, what, what do I like doing when I was young? What did I dream of? And that the memories of the me making cakes came into my mind and I realized that there was something there. I'm making the cake that is inspired oh, wow. by the masterclass. Mm. Are you trying to uh, be one up on me, Kentani? <laughs> no, uh, it was a good inspiration. Oh, I'm glad. I'm just going to add different things. So mine has almond flour in it. <laughs> so besides her inspiring the cake, does this, you know, is this inspired by any family memories, the type of spice that you're using? Not really. I just love the story behind the cake. And I was like, why not? Let She's me try getting herself a man. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it works. I hope it works. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. My earliest baking memories are when I was a little child, as a family, we'd always come together on a Sunday to sit up my granny's sisters. I started my baking business, J Bagels, about four years ago, and that was after I graduated from university. I never really got any joy from what I was studying, and what started as a passion project has now grown in heaps and bounds over the past four years. I love making celebration cakes for any occasion, but I also like to incorporate some of my architectural background. And one of the styles of cakes that I really enjoy to do are concrete cakes. It sort of gives you a play on the eye. You're not really sure if it is a cake or not. And it's just a lot of fun. So today I'm doing a Kusista inspired cake. Wow, that sounds amazing. Uh-huh. Um, when I heard it, that we're going to incorporate spices, I was so excited because this is my go-to. Okay. Oh. Um, it brings back um, so many Memories with my family. Oh, that's so special, Jay. Yeah, yeah. Well, Cook Sisters was something that I make with my mom every Sunday. Oh, wow. She isn't doing too well at the moment, so oh, this is my love letter to my mom. Oh, that's um, so sweet. And yeah, as kids, it was sacrilege to throw away the Nachi peels. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to dehydrate them today. It's going to take too long. So, I've got my Nachis here. Right. And, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. So it's oh, I'm sure we are going to enjoy it. And your mom is going to be so proud of she you. She is, Thank absolutely. You. She's <laughs> here looking over you and watching. So, don't mess this up, hey? No. I want it to taste as good as mom's Goo Sisters. It will, it will. I Delicious. promise. For my cake, I add all the spices that you would want to add into a chai latte. It's got amazing spice. I'm a foodie, I eat with my eyes. That's where photography came in as well. I love photography because I just love the way I can capture emotion and movement through photos and videos. Chai, why chai? You know, I love a chai latte. Mm -hmm. I also love an iced chai latte, and I want to incorporate that in a cake. And how many layers is this cake? I'm doing three layers. Very grand cake you're making. Yeah, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good, like your Instagram photos, hey? Mm. So I'm, I'm doing it high because I wanna get nice heights so I can so you get more likes, more likes in, the, <laughs> in the photo. Okay, so when you bake, do you always think about the end photo for your Instagram page? Is that what inspires the look of your bake? Yes. So this is gonna be amazing. Yeah, it should be. Okay, okay. So we'll, we'll hold you to it. To see. <laughs> I'm looking behind me and I see Jason. He's also doing a chai cake. The competition's on. I'm a bit nervous because he's the chef and I'm the home cook. It's good competition. Game on, game on. Hey, dude. I see berries, yes. which is quite unusual. So I'm going to take my berries, kind of like mash them in, and mush them in my cream cheese. So it's going to be part of my cream cheese. And so that's now your topping, like your frosting. Yes. That's nice. She did say that we're doing a, a Parisian 
kind of taste. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to find it out somewhere oh. with with the taste. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, sir. So I hope we fall in love with the taste too. If my love inspired cake takes Zola, so be it. But my heart really was leaning towards Pfizer. I've been baking since a young age. My memory of baking is baking back at home with mom in the kitchen, baking banana breads, cook sisters, and so, and also including treats for Diwali. I try not to be the designated baker within my friends group, but if they do ask nicely, I try to be here. Initially, I wanted to do a cream cheese icing with the mascarpone, similar to the one Pfizer did. But then halfway through, I started thinking, you know what, I really would like to incorporate white chocolates. Adding it to my icing might make it um, richer and also it might just give that feeling of that foam on top of the latte. Contestants. You are one hour in, that means you have two hours left. Two hours, let's go! Woo! I realized that I put one teaspoon of baking powder instead of two. That's like a big no-no, because that means the cake will be dense, it won't rise as it's supposed to rise. I realized that I've got enough time to cover or to make another cake, because if I don't, I'm in trouble. Interesting component that I've recognized is your zucchini that you've oh, been using. What? Yes, um, I've added some zucchini into my cake because my grandmother has zucchini in her garden. So I decided just incorporate it to just add a bit of who I am into the dish. Have you made this for your coco before? No, Does no, she no, approve? No, no. no she, she wouldn't approve. <laughs> Normally when I do such things, she leaves me in the kitchen because she doesn't understand why you're adding this, why you're adding this. So I write the call when I'm done, I'm like, taste it. Okay. And then after she's eaten, she's like, oh, can I have the recipe? And I'm just like, Oh, okay, that's I'm okay. Fine. I hope that's my reaction yeah. after I eat your delicious Hopefully. cake. Hopefully. So you you are on your second sponge now. Yeah. It hasn't affected your time. You're still looking calm. I'm looking calm because it's just the cake and the icing and a little bit of nuts ganache. As long as when you eat the cake, you enjoy it. You see, when something is very simple, it has to be incredible. So I hope that I hope so too. the flavor is going to speak for itself. It. Yeah. So I just come around as I'm taking my cake out. So there's a bit of pressure. I test the cake, comes out clean, and it's looking good. There's a bit of a battle of the chai going on today. I heard. Are you confident? I'm very confident. Good man. I wonder what Megan's frosting is going to be. Mmm. Mine's cream cheese. Got a bit of cinnamon in there. Hey, let the battle of the chai commence. <laughs> <laughs> Your sponges are done. It's a flop. It hasn't risen, has it? It changes my whole idea of the cake. It came up shorter than expected. But you're layering it. But when I do layer them up, it will look the part that I, ex I had yes, in my you vision. You're going to make it happen. Yes. So. Perfect. Jay, I see here some spicy syrup. Are we soaking our sponge? So what I, I'm going to use the syrup for is more of a decorative element. So I'm going to use a pastry brush, brush the syrup around the sponges, and then put some desiccated coconut. So it gives you that look and feel of a persistent. Mm -hmm. Nice. That sounds good. Contestants, you are halfway through the challenge. One and a half hours left. I hope your sponges are cooling because the clock is ticking. Woo! Mobila, how's your pistachio paste coming along? It wasn't um, pasting properly because the, my volume was low, so I'm just, I've just added more pistachios. Yes. Okay, keep grinding, let's see. As I'm mixing, the mix actually goes up. As So I want to just quickly push, you know, the mixture down so that it actually pastes up. Oh! <laughs> Okay, now I understand why the spatula has a thing. The machine has its own spatula. So me, in my panic mode, I pick the wrong spatula, and then vroom, it goes in and... <laughs> Lesson learned when using the Thermomix, you have to use the correct spatula and follow the safety instructions. Otherwise, disaster. Coming up, can Kobile save her pistachio paste from the brink of disaster and finish her cake on time? Who will influence the nation with their creative bakes? Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. I thought you were going to turn it off and then open it and then scrape. I, 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 <laughs> I never imagined you would put it in the running machine. I really never did. Luckily, it's still in chunks, so I could remove the 
bits and pieces of the spatula. The worst thing about it, Zola is here when everything goes wrong. Oh my goodness. I've taken my cakes out the oven. They are beautiful. Now it's just time for them to cool and to get them decorated. So I burnt my syrup, uh, candied syrup that was still going to brush into the sponge. So it's going to be a remake, a quick one. So some elements that I left to do, I'm trying to make a jelly. I have a jelly that I just want to layer right on top. The interesting part of this competition specifically is that you can bring an, a special item to keep by your side. What have you chosen? So I chose a picture of my grandmother and I. So, so I, was cute. I was graduating in kindergarten. Um, and those cups, are they also part of the special item? I didn't want to mention the cups, but yes, also the cups I took from her four or five years back. I've, they've been with me since. So you so. were visiting your grand and you stole her baking cups? I didn't steal, I, bossed, I passed it on to the next generation, the third generation, which is I. So those stolen cups are your good luck charm? Those passed down cups <laughs> are, 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 my, are my good luck charm, yes. This is my second sponge. I actually made a mistake with the first one. So I'm happy with how it came out. It's actually taking longer to cool down than the first one. It's, it's, it's really frustrating. So I can't do much. The only thing I can do is the icing, and it doesn't take long to make. I'm thinking about a way that I could really improve on the presentation of my cake. I'm going to dehydrate some slices of nachi, brush some of that kusista syrup on to give it a nice glaze, and I know that will be the cherry on the top, or the nachi on the top. <laughs> I've decided to temper some chocolate to make uh, chocolate feather leaves. Uh, I feel like it's going to be a great addition to the cake. I think I'm just panicking because they need to sit for like 30 minutes. And then bake them. It's a lot of time. I am quite worried. Contestants, we have one hour to go. Remember the theme of this challenge is spice. As you're moving into the final stages of your cake, make sure that it's prominent. It's going to be a big factor in the judging. I've decided to make a cinnamon drop. Basically, it's honey, sugar, cinnamon, I melt it down in a pot, and hopefully it will fall nicely over my cake. So Duke, your sponges, I see you save them quite well. What is your plan? I need to think outside the box. Because they didn't rise, so I'll be stacking them on top yeah, of each other. That's clever. Almost like a thousand layer cuts. Yeah. Great plan. Yes. So what else do you think um, could go wrong now at this point? My icing. Oh. Is this meant to be royal icing? <laughs> yes. I think you can add some sifted icing sugar, then gradually add some of this and whisk it in. I suggest you get moving with this then. My second attempt of the royal icing is actually looking good. It's working out. Jason, I don't want to interrupt you. This is delicate work. What are you up to? It is. I'm trying to make um, chocolate leaves. How important is this as part of your dish? It's not that important, it's just more of a decoration. Uh, it's an edge, it's a nice to have. Trying it's to make like it look a... pretty, yeah. Okay. Most people think avo in a cake is weird, but I really love avos. So it's just an extra element because the zucchini is green, so it's just gonna be like different shades of green and avo is gonna add the color and flavor. So I'm making a mousse, I've just decided to add more avo just to increase that avo flavor. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm not too happy with my buttercream, so I'm just going to restart it. I think the consistency is a bit too loose, so I'm worried that it's not going to hold up when I need to fight yeah, it. So. That sounds about right. What happened? Um, I think I overworked the cream cheese, and I think it went too too soft. Yeah. Um, and I think putting that in the fridge isn't going to work because I don't have much time left. Yeah, agreed. Okay, good luck with that. Thank you. Happy with your cream? I am. And there's, there's, is there spice in there? In, in the your cream? No. Okay. Because I've got a drip, <laughs> which I was supposed to put on the first layer. But I'll what just, is that? It's, a syrup. Like a, it's like a syrup. Yeah, a, um, a cinnamon syrup. Okay. So what was the Sorry. plan? So I was going to put on each layer, like a little bit on each layer, but I've already put the bottom one on. So oh. You reminded me. <laughs> but I might just put it on the top and let it drip down. I came in handy for you. Better. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> A lot is going on. Um, almost, almost there, but there's still some things I need to do. I've got my ginger uh, jelly that's in the fridge. I'm not sure if that's it. I'm stacking my cake, stacking my layers together, and see she's leaning. Just like the Tower of Pisa. Dang it. Cringe. Let me cringe a bit by myself in my head and then come back. <laughs> okay, Duke. Contestants, final 30 minutes. I start stacking my first layer, putting the syrup on and keep going from there and everything's gone into panic mode and I'm just racing towards the finish line. 
Oh, there's the cinnamon syrup, eh? Yeah. It's not quite a caramel, it was just most to be a drip, but I'm, oh, I'm so actually happy okay. with that. Okay. You know, like when you have a, a chai latte and they put like the little the cinnamon on the top and that yeah. was kind of where oh. I was going. I'm looking around and Jay is next to me, he's doing his thing and Jay's sitting at the back is like, you know, putting all things out there and I'm like, oh my goodness, maybe my technical stuff is not good enough here. Ooh, this looks like it's coming together. Thank you. Does it uh, scream Kusista to you? It screams Kusista slash Lamington. Well, listen, if a Kusista and a Lamington had a baby, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad either. <laughs> it would be a delicious and beautiful baby. <laughs> I think we've gone to something. I think you are. 15 minutes left, everybody. Are we decorating? Mobile? Yes. Zora. Okay, macarons are out. Yeah. Wonderful. Are we decorating the cake? The, the sponge looks very naked over there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, remember it's about a, it's about the cake, not yeah. the garnish. Yeah. I'm really worried because all the attention is on me. I'm not done. My station is chaotic. I'm running out of time. Would you like me to help you with those? Oh, um, yeah. Okay, cool. Listen, I am a little bit worried about Mobile. She is spinning right now. She has like 10 minutes to go. The cake is only time to come together. Is she going to finish? Yeah, well, Megan finished her cake 15 minutes early and she stepped in to help Mobile. Oh, so, so sweet. Uh, giving her the best, uh, best chance possible. Yeah, yeah. We love the camaraderie. Yeah, it's nice. 10 minutes left now. I'm done. I think there's nothing else I can do. So it is what it is. If I go to the bottom three, then I'll have to work harder next time. I see most of our contestants are done. And I'm looking at my station right now. It's a little bit crazy right here. Am I going to make it to... Oh, yeah. Five minutes left, contestants. Five minutes left. Come on, everybody. Come on, guys. Let's go. You got well, this, girl. This. Done. Nice. Contestants, we're in our last minute. Come on, last stretch. Come yeah. on, Duke. Come on, Duke. How is it that I'm the only one who's not done, people? Good luck. Thank you for the cheers. Almost there. 30 seconds. I'm actually feeling a little bit nervous for Duke. I hope he's going to be able to finish for time is up. Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up, everybody. Well done. Well done, girl. Well done. Right, let's taste some cake. Like Let them eat cake. <laughs> <laughs> Next up. Which contestants will bring the spice to earn themselves a spot in the top 10? With a grand prize worth 90,000 Rand, including Samsung home and kitchen appliances, a Thermomix TM6 to the value of 26,000 Rand, plus Le Creuset cookware and accessories to the value of 15,000 Rand, the stakes are high. Whose creation will tickle the judges' taste buds? Bake more memories with the Taste Master and Royal Baking Powder. This is a chai latte inspired chiffon with the cream cheese icing. I'm up first, I'm a little bit nervous, but hey, let's get it out there. The chai battle is on. Initially when she cut the cake, opened it up, the actual crumb of the cake seemed dense to me. I was a little bit concerned, but to be completely honest, I thought the cake was absolutely delicious. The flavors, the spice, the chai, Everything for me is coming through very nicely. I think the addition of the white chocolate definitely comes through in your icing. The sponge is melting your mouth. The chiffon cake that you chose, I think it was a great choice. Mm. The challenge was spice, and boy, did you deliver. Oh, the cinnamon, the warmth, definitely takes all the chai spice flavors. Oh, I could eat an entire slice. Overall, I got good comments and I feel quite excited and I'm proud of myself for what I've achieved. Standard being set, I'm nervous. Today, I baked a spicy zucchini and pistachio cake covered with some lemon cream cheese frosting and it's topped with some lemon curd cream avocado mousse, pistachio and cardamom macarons filled with a lemon curd filling. Wow, that is certainly a mouthful. Now yeah. we understand why there was a mad <laughs> rush to finish. What stands out for me are your macarons. Um, your feet look perfect. I must say, when I saw you 
on that wobbly pan. It was a bit touch and go, but you pulled through. When Zola cuts into the cake, I'm like, whoa, the texture of my cake is great. However, I'm still worried about how spicy my cake is. Mobile, I think that your sponge has the most beautiful texture. The crumb is really light. I love the texture that zucchini gives to your sponge. The sponge itself doesn't quite have enough spice in it. When you bite into that macaron, then you get that cardamom aroma. So I wish that you'd sort of balanced your spice flavor in your cake a bit more. Personally, I felt like the lemon icing dominated my palate. I didn't get that spice experience due to that. I'm very grateful about the feedback. They pointed out things that even I myself were worried about, but I've learned to be more confident with myself and just trust my recipe development skills. This feels like the longest walk I've ever had to do. <laughs> my heart is racing, my hands are sweating. Today I made a Kusista inspired cake. One of the earliest memories I have of baking is my mom, my granny, my aunts making Kusistas in the kitchen and just that joy and happiness that was shared in the kitchen really resonated with me. I am stressed. This is hardcore. I'm hot, then I'm cold. I'm sweating, then I'm not sweating. I'm so nervous. I love how simply you've decorated your cake. Your sponge is nice and moist. The fact that you brushed your layers with that syrup really makes a huge difference. From a spice perspective, I'm getting fantastic after notes and aromas lingering, and the coconut is magic. When I took my bite, I closed my eyes and I pictured a cool sister. And when I ate your cake, that's exactly what I got. I'm having such mixed emotions. I'm thinking about my mom and my family, who I miss so much. And this was really a love letter to them. And just hearing the positive feedback just made my heart smile. It made my eyes swell up. I was just overjoyed. Hello, Kentani. Hi. Kentani, you spent um, a lot of time waiting around at the end. You had so much time. Do you think that you could have maybe done a little bit more? I think I could have added uh, more spices on the icing. I'm not sure about the spice challenge if I incorporated enough spice into my cake, so I'm a bit nervous about that. Kentani, um, you were inspired by my Masterclass, quite big shoes to fill. Uh -huh. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> <laughs> I love the flavors coming through. I'm definitely getting the saffron and the rose. The fact that you used almond flour in the sponge because you did mention you were gluten free, I thought that was quite clever of you. And I also love the simplicity of your decor. It's elegant, just like you. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. <laughs> this cake does not do much for me. Not specifically by the addition of the almond flour. For me, it wasn't an enhancement to what we tasted earlier after the masterclass. Also, the frosting is, is a bit butter dominant to me and uh, lacking spice. Mm -hmm. This is a spice challenge, yeah. first and foremost. A good effort, but unfortunately, just not enough spice for me. I look at Jason's cake and it looks fantastic. I feel a little bit anxious. Definitely some serious competition. Today I've made a chai spiced cake with uh, vanilla cream cheese frosting. I've also topped it with fresh blueberries, dried flowers. I've also made some dark chocolate feathers and I've topped it with cinnamon and roasted hazelnuts. The flavor of chai you brought in perfectly. The texture of your cake, of your sponge, for me, is uh, gummy. I'm not getting that phenomenal chai flavor that I got from the first cake, but I do get the intense cinnamon in your frosting, and your frosting is quite light, which is great. Your decor was on point, so 10 points to you for that. Thank you. First, I want to commend you for tempering chocolate and making such beautiful chocolate leaves. Love the showing of skill there. Just a shame that you did underbake the sponge just a tad. I'm quite shattered about the results. I should have done better. I put my cake in front of the judges. Dang it, forgot my 
dehydrated ginger. I have to commend you. Every time you had a setback, you acted like it was no problem and you kept on going. So I want to say well done on that because that is part of this game and it's part of this challenge. Not entirely what I wanted, but she looks pretty, she looks beautiful, she looks edible, that's key. Duke, the burst of flavor from that little piece of ginger gel or jelly, I wish there was more throughout the cake because it's very limited as a decor element. And I think that that is where your kick and your spice would have been. If you don't eat that little piece of ginger gel, you don't get any spice. It's mm. dominant with berry. Sponge crumbles a little bit dry. The cake doesn't hold together very nicely. The royal icing, I don't think it was necessary. But I mean, your cake is delicious if it was any other challenge, but not a spice challenge. Contestants, congratulations on completing your very first Taste Master Challenge. Give yourselves a huge round of applause. It's time to announce who will be moving to the top 10 and who will be entering our first elimination challenge. <sighs> I don't know what to think. In a competition like this, anything could happen. Jay? Please step forward. Jay, that Kusas the cake took me on a true spice journey. The sponge was delicious. The spice flavor was balanced. Thank you very much for a wonderful bake. You have successfully made it through. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I am ecstatic. Next up, Kensani, please step forward. Kensani, you kept it safe today. You kept it simple. In my opinion, you kept it too simple for this challenge. You are unfortunately entering the elimination challenge. I'm feeling very disappointed right now because I feel like I didn't do enough. Duke, please step forward. Duke, that ginger gel was incredible. It was spicy, it was interesting. I just wish there was a little bit more of it. Unfortunately, you are entering the elimination challenge. My heart drops. Ugh, okay. Megan, please step forward. Megan, you followed through with the challenge. Um, your spice in your chai latte sponge was amazing. I especially loved the cream. It was light and flavoursome. Megan, you're through to the top 10. Well done. Oh, I am so happy. I can't believe it. It's just such a wonderful feeling. Please, could both of you step forward? Mobile, your technical talents and abilities were showcased today. Very much so. Maybe you did too much. I felt like your cake that you presented was out of balance, flavor-wise. But technically, if we had to dissect your cake, very well done today. Jason, just the cinnamon, the flavors, it was beautiful. The chocolate leaves, the details, amazing. Really, we had a great experience enjoying your cake. However, your cake was underbaked. I'm about to faint. Yo, even prayer can't save me at this moment in time because the decision has been made. Jason, unfortunately, you are on the bottom three. Mobile, you are going to the top ten. I'm relieved. I took a risk and I'm here to challenge myself. Pretty disappointed right now, but I feel like it's just going to push me to do better during the elimination. Congratulations to the three of you who have made it to the top 10. We look forward to seeing many more fabulous bakes from you. To the guys who are in the bottom three, the fight is not over yet. You can come back stronger and better. All that's left now is to announce who was the best baker today. The winner 
of the Royal Baking Powder Spice Mastery Pin. You blow us away with your innovation and techniques. We love the flavor combinations and the use of spices. Well done, Jay. Oh. Thank you so much. Well done. Thank you. The only thing I can say is I made it. <laughs> Mom, this is for you. So we'll see you guys in the top 10 and we'll see you in the elimination challenge. The standard has been very high from this challenge. I just need to up my game. Elimination challenge. It's the Duke is coming. Get ready for him. Next Friday evening on the Tastemaster SA, it's time for the first elimination challenge as the bottom six contestants compete to create the ultimate Instagrammable bake. Joining the judging panel is cake photographer and owner of the Sweet Lionheart online bakery, Nikki Simmons. Another feel-good production.